Here's our 2017 technology strategy pyramid that we're all familiar with. And throughout the year, we've talked about the foundational and targeted technologies, but today we're gonna to focus in our exploratory. So computer vision, we're gonna talk about why computer vision? What's our goal and how are we gonna get there? So why computer, computer vision? So first off, this is an opportunity for some greenfield software development. The, the mission domain and the technical domain is really interesting and challenging, and <clears throat> BTI 360 is well positioned to, to capitalize in this area. So that's why. So what's our goal? So our goal is to become recognized as the solution provider for uh, open source live streaming video. So let me unpack that a little bit. What do I mean by open source live streaming? Open source means it's available on the web. Live streaming means we're observing some piece of the earth in some near real-time fashion. So a great example are, would be traffic cameras. We're going to hit traffic cameras a little bit. Um, just to be clear, what our goal is not is I'm not necessarily looking at BTI 360 as providing all the computer vision analytics in this space. Uh, there's a lot of work in industry and, and in academics that are creating al good algorithms in, in this area. What I see is we're uniquely positioned for our customers to be able to implement the platform that those analytics can be applied within. That's our goal. So how are we gonna get there? So the good news is, as I mentioned, we're well positioned. So the office that I work in, we've developed a lot of the pieces to be able to, to create this type of solution. And we're having internal customers reach out to us and say, hey, could you set this up for us over here? Could you set this up for us over there? Um, the unfortunate thing is our office is a research and development office. We don't have the capacity to go stand up these systems for, for people. And, uh, and we're more than happy to go and teach them how to stand up these types of systems, but they come back and ultimately say they just rather, would rather buy it, right? Which is great for BTI 360, but there's a problem. These guys don't see BTI 360 as a solution provider in this area. So how do we change that? We need to create something that we can demonstrate to change their mindset so they see us as someone who can help them out here. So that's where we're gonna get there. Hence, vehicle re-identification. So the last three weeks, John and I have been working on this project, uh, vehicle re-identification. We're, we're doing matching of, like image matching between vehicles and pulling this together into a demonstrable product that we can get in front of the customer and start to form in their minds, hey, BTI can help us solution this. So let's dig into this. What do we mean by vehicle re-identification? So ultimately we're taking uh, different video streams, chipping out all the, all the moving vehicles from them, and then searching across all the moving vehicles and deriving, hey, this one vehicle or vehicles is common across all of these different uh, input video clips. Make sense? All right, so here's a little example. All right, we'll see the car roll by in the green bounding box, bam. So we just captured, uh, we recognize this vehicle's moving through, so we take some snapshots and we bound as tightly as we can to polygon around it, say this is what we're calling the vehicle. So what that results in, taking that entire video clip, we've got about this 22 images of chipped out, I guess we could say moving objects. You know, we, we could say vehicles, but you notice here, we're actually capturing a couple people that we, uh, uh, fit the criteria that we're looking at. Um, certainly we can improve on the specific algorithm that we're using to chip, uh, but we really want to just create a base case implementation so that we can show an end-to-end -end solution. That, that's really the goal, the end-to-end -end solution. So that's great, we've got all these chips here, but we notice a lot of them are, look like kind of the same vehicle. So what we want to be able to do next is to um, put this into a little bit of a structure to uh, discreetly see the same vehicles in, in as a grouping. So John created an algorithm where basically we look at, okay, what frames did we observe these chips in? And were those frames sequential? So it seems like it makes sense that you see the same, video, uh, the same vehicle in sequential frames. And then what was their position um, in the, within the frame? And then you can kind of stitch all that together to say, oh yeah, I think these are the same vehicle. So we, did, we applied that algorithm and we're able to uh, kind of discreetly identify uh, all right, we've got these nine vehicles now for this one observation. Then we want to get into matching. 
So we have our observation one uh, bounded in blue, observation two bounded in, in red, and we really we only want to see on the end of this the vehicles that obs are observed in both cases. So we can see over here, blowing up the result, we have uh, observation one vehicle, silver uh, Civic, I'd say, matching observation two. This darker car here matched two vehicles from observation two, when we can see one of them is actually red, so we know we can make improvements on our matcher, right? Uh, but if you look closely, I think it's actually the same model car, it's just a different color. So that's really not, not too bad of a match there. And then we've got this other, uh, the silver matrix. So these are matching across two observations, but really what we want to do is to have several observations. So let's go ahead and extract all the chips, uh, put them in a structure of, of each vehicle for a, a third observation bounded in purple, and we have the result here. So the way to interpret this result is uh, vehicle from observation one, which maps to a match in observation two, the same vehicle in observation one matching observation three. And then down here, we have a different vehicle matching in both observations one, two, and three. So our results are these two vehicles, uh, two discrete vehicles that we have a successful match. So great, we won, right? We did it. But how do we really know that these were the common vehicles across all three? Well, we know because we know this is John's matrix and uh, this is Evan's Honda Civic. And uh, I'll also give a shout out to Hudson for running the camera in the office and uh, kind of orchestrating because we wanted to be sure we had enough vehicles running through. So he's kind of running the show to, to get this, implement this test case. So uh, we ran this whole scenario. We were able to pull the thread through. So that's great. So now we look at what's next. We need to pull this full a little further along. What we're looking at now for this vehicle re-identification project is wrapping some skin on it so that we can really have a compelling uh, interface where we can show, oh, you upload these videos and then out comes your, your results. Um, so we're working on that now. The next project we're gonna look at is the web scraping and making that searchable. So the same thing, we wanna pull that through. Uh, we're not worried about solving every problem along the way, but we wanna to get to something we can demonstrate to the customer and then have them pay us to go and build the solution that's more robust and can solve their problems. That's all I have. Definitely, I know we're on a tight schedule today. Uh, reach out to me uh, in the after hours time. And bam, that's it.